Government Business, Order of the Day number three, Social Security Administration Amendment to Cashless Welfare Bill 2019, resumption of debate on the second reading. The question is that this bill now be read a second time, and I call the member for Barton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Assistant, Mr. Assistant Speaker. I rise to speak on the Social Security Legislation amend Amendment, Cashless Welfare Bill 2019. I move the amendment circulated in my name. Labor has serious concerns about the cashless welfare card. And we have always opposed its rollout nationally. Labor supported the initial trial of the cashless debit card in Sejuna and East Kimberley because community leaders indicated support at the time. Of course, the initial uh, support offered by communities came against the backdrop of inadequate local services and inadequate local job creation and economic development programs. The investments that government should have been making in local social and economic well-being. Labor did not support the further expansion of the trial to Bundaberg, Harvey Bay or the goldfields because of lack of evidence and a lack of any clear community support. Let me be clear, Mr Assistant Speaker. Labor will not support the expansion of the cashless debit card to new communities unless the community wants the card and there is informed community consent. At the election, the rollout of the cashless debit card in Bundaberg, Harvey Bay, only partially complete, was only partially complete. Labor committed to stopping the rollout of the cashless debit card in Bundaberg, Harvey Bay, and to taking a case management approach to putting, a place, putting in place alternative support for people already on the card, as well as investing in support services and programs that work. Labor has not been able to satisfy ourselves through our own consultations that there has been the same community desire was, was present in the other trial sites the Goldfields and Bundaberg Harvey Bay. Labor successfully amended a bill in the Senate in April this year to allow people participating in the cashless debit card trial sites to get off the cashless debit card if they are effectively managing their affairs. Labor's amendment required community panels, which were established in some cashless debit card sites, to be the decision makers. This was consistent with existing arrangements for reducing the portion of a person's income quarantine on the cashless card, debit card. The government's subsequent consultations with the community panels found that they did not want to be the decision maker. This is out of concern for the pressure that could be placed on panel members by members of the community who apply to get off the cashless debit card. On this basis, Labor will not oppose this bill because it is consistent with the amendment we successfully made earlier in the year and because it will give people a pathway off the card. This bill will amend the exit criteria under current legislation, Income Management and Cashless Welfare Act 2019, to allow for a broader consideration of opt-out criteria for persons participating in the cashless welfare card. The bill will create a single administrative process for Department of Social Services to make decisions about people getting off the cashless debit card. The bill also combines the pre-existing welfare exemption, which allows DSS to exempt a person from the cashless debit card if it is a threat to their physical, mental or emotional health, with the exit pathway established by Labor's amendment. Further, the bill clarifies that exit applications need to be made in a form that is approved by the Secretary of the Department of Social Services and expands the wellbeing exemption provisions so they apply more broadly across all regions. This bill will ultimately assist participants who are managing their affairs well and who want to get off the card. And we understand hundreds of people are seeking an exemption from the trial and have already approached DSS about the opt-out process. This shows there is a strong community support for people being able to get off the cashless debit card. The bill sets out what DSS will need to consider when determining the reasonable and responsible management of a person's affairs, including financial affairs. This is one, 
the interest of any children for whom the person is responsible, two, whether the person was convicted of an offence against the law of the Commonwealth, the state or territory, or was serving a sentence of imprisonment for such an offence at any time in the last 12 months, three, risk of homelessness, four, the health and safety of the person and the community, five, the responsibilities and circumstances of the person, and finally, six, the person's engagement in the community, including the person's employment or efforts to obtain work. Labor has some concerns about the operation of certain provisions in this bill. We will continue to speak to the minister, and Labor, of course, reserves our right to seek to make improvements in the Senate. The Cassius debit card trial has been running too long. It is no longer a trial, and it is time the government produced some real evidence about the effectiveness of the card, as well as reassess community support, support in each trial area. That is why Labor has moved an amendment to this bill, calling on the government to firstly table a report in parliament by the end of the year, making clear whether or not there is continuing community support in any of the trial sites for the cashless debit card. Secondly, we would like the government to table a wraparound services plan in the parliament by the end of the year, explaining how the government has boosted community services in the trial sites and what increased investment will be made in the future. And thirdly, make the cashless debit card voluntary from, thir from 30 January 2020 unless there is a clear local community support and consent for the card. This is an incredibly important point. The government simply cannot continue to impose the card on communities where there is not clear support. And they cannot continue to impose it in the absence of evidence about the card's effectiveness. In this context, Labor's future position on the cash debit card is clear. We will not support the extension of the cashless debit card trial sites or the fur further rollout of the cashless debit card, unless the government can demonstrate there is clear and genuine local community support. That is not because a mayor wants it, it's not because a local member wants it, it's because the local community wants it. Since the introduction of the cashless debit card trials, the government has continually failed to be upfront about the full cost of implementing the cashless debit card. Hopefully this is something the minister can shed some light on in the course of this debate. The government has already spent $34 million on the cashless debit card, and the budget papers show they plan to spend $128.8 million over the four estimates, including on new sites and the rollout of the cashless debit card across the Northern Territory. That's over $160 million that could instead have been allocated to employment and economic development, early intervention services and to drug and alcohol treatment. It was reported in mid-2017 that the cost per participant of the cashless debit card exceeds $10,000 per participant. In the same year, the Auditor-General found that the annual running cost of the cashless debit card will be over $3,700 per participant. The problem is that we have never had a proper evaluation into what better outcomes would be possible if this money were differently invested. This is incredibly concerning, particularly when you consider the Auditor General found that there was no evidence, and I repeat, no evidence, that the cashless debit card was effective. In addition, Labor has become increasingly concerned about the government's persistent clinging to the deeply flawed ERIMA evaluation. And I have read that evaluation from cover to cover. The Prime Minister has continued to use this report to sing the praises of the cashless debit card and misled Australian people about the extent of its success. Leading academics have referred to comments made by the government as extremely misleading and perplexing. The Auditor-General found deep inconsistencies in the ORIMA evaluation. The government must stop relying on this report to justify the cashless debit card trials. 
At the Senate inquiry into the cashless debit card earlier this year, the committee heard evidence that in some trial sites the cashless debit card has now been in operation for so long that the opportunity for proper, a proper piece, piece of evaluation to be conducted has passed. In fact, we may never know what, in any positive, what, what if any positive impacts the cashless debit card may have had on these affected communities. There have, there have now been a number of inquiries into the cashless debit card scheme, and the most recent committee heard at best mixed, mixed evidence about the card. Some think it has been beneficial in their communities, others think, others think it has made existing problems worse. Indigenous leader and foundation chair in Australian Indigenous Studies at the University of Melbourne, Professor Marcia Langton, has said that the cashless debit card is a failure. Professor Langton said because the local community is not involved in implementing the policy, the policy has failed. One wonders at the rhetoric of this government of doing things with Aboriginal people, not to Aboriginal people. One of the community leaders in Kununurra who, was initially, who initially supported the introduction of the trial, Mr Desmond Hill, has since withdrawn his support. Mr Hill told the recent inquiry that one of the conditions community leaders had when agreeing to the East Kimberley becoming a trial site was that people would be able to apply to leave the trial. This has not been the case up until now. Another Indigenous leader in the East Kimberley, Ian Trust, who remains a supporter of the cashless debit card, told the committee that he was not opposed to people being able to come off the card in some circumstances. This is why, Mr Assistant Speaker, it is important people can get off the cashless debit card, even in areas where the trial might be supported by the community. This bill will allow people to come off the cashless debit card, and the fact is that many of those people should not have been on the card in the first place. The government has already had enough time to demonstrate the merits of the cashless debit card, and they have failed to do so. And that is why Labor is calling for three things in our amendment today. Firstly, table a report in Parliament by the end of the year, making clear whether or not there is continuing community support in any of the four trial sites for the card. Secondly, table a wraparound services plan in the Parliament by the end of the year explaining how the government has boosted community services in the trial sites and what increased investment will be made into the future. And finally, make the cashless debit card voluntary from 30 January 2020, unless there is clear local community support and consent for the card. I think they are perfectly reasonable things to expect about such a massive intervention into people's lives. Mr. Speaker, or Mr. Assistant Speaker, the bottom line is this. While Labor will not oppose this bill because it implements an amendment we made some months ago and provides a pathway off the card, we will not support the extension of the cashless debit card trial sites or the further rollout of the cashless debit card unless the government can clearly demonstrate there is clear and genuine local community support which has been a total failure in the last two trial sites. Labor will take an evidence-based approach to this policy and to income management. We will not demonise social security recipients, as seems to be the habit of this government. I thank the member for Barton. <coughs> Is the amendment seconded? Yes, I second it and reserve my right to speak. The original question was that this bill now be read a second time. To this, the Honourable Member for Barton has moved as an amendment that all words after that be admitted uh, with a view to substituting other words. The question now is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Those against no. I think the noes have it. Division required. We'll ring the bells.
we'll have the uh, division um, after summing up. So I call the minister. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. I would like to thank members for their contribution to this debate on the Social Security Administration Amendment Cashless Welfare Bill of 2019. The cashless debit card is an important part of our plan to improve the lives of Australians by supporting people, families and communities in places where high levels of welfare dependence coexist with high levels of social harm. By reducing the amount of cash available in a community, the cashless debit card is reducing the overall harm caused by welfare fuelled alcohol, gambling and drug misuse. This bill continues the operation of the cashless debit card program but improves the processes introduced through recent non-government amendments for participants to exit the program. It provides a more effective and consistent application process and ensures that the welfare of children, families and the whole community is considered when assessing applications for participants to exit the cashless debit card. The passage of the bill will clarify the administrative requirements of the cashless debit card exit process and ensure that the exit process is consistent across cashless debit card regions. There are no changes to the continuation of the cashless debit card program in the current trial areas. No change to the government's commitment to reducing the devastating effects of alcohol, drugs and gambling in these communities. The government is introducing this legislation following consultations with community leaders to ensure there is a clear and fair process for participants to exit the cashless debit card program. The government thanks the community leaders it has worked with and will continue to work with in the implementation of the cashless debit card. Uh, we acknowledge their courage and their leadership to assist members in their communities to break the cycle of welfare dependency, improve social outcomes and support people into employment. I commend the bill. The original question was that this bill now be read a second time. To this, the honourable member for Barton has moved as an amendment that all words after that be omitted with a view to substituting other words. The immediate question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against no. no. I think the noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells.
Lock the doors. Order. The original question was this bill be now read a second time. To this, the honourable member for Barton has moved as an amendment that all words after that be omitted with a view to substituting other words. So the immediate question is that the amendment moved by the member for Barton be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair. The noes to the left. I appoint the honourable member for members for Nichols and Gray. Tell us for the eyes and the honourable members for Lawler and Werriwa. Tell us for the nose.
Order the result of the division is ayes 64, no 75. The question is therefore negative. The question now is that this bill be read a second time. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. The clerk. Second reading a bill for an act to amend the Social Security Administration Act 1999 and for related purposes. Is is leave granted for the third reading to be moved immediately? I thank the member for granted. Leaves granted. The minister. Uh, I move that this be, bill be now read a third time. Question is that the bill be now read a third time. All those of that opinion say aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. The clerk. Third reading, a bill for an act to amend the Social Security Administration Act 1999 and for related purposes.